Hello, and welcome back to another SLP at UCLA video. In the last video, we talked about sketches, and today we're going to finish up that discussion and essentially go over the more advanced uh, features of the sketch uh, protocol. So, for example, uh, let's just say we want to make a sketch on this face, um, or like, like one of these faces, and it's not on the plane, right? It's not on one of the uh, like, it's not on the right plane, it's not on the top plane or anything. It's not on the front plane if you're trying to do something over here. Um, so what we can do, if it's, if it's a flat surface, we can just click on the face, and we'll be doing stuff on this face. Um, and that becomes our new plane, right? This is our origin here, right? This all those little arrows. Um, and this, is, yeah, this is where our sketch will be. And if we want to, like, see, uh, that, like parallel to the sketch, we can come here and say normal to. Right, this is technically perpendicular to, but uh, in my mind, it's more of a parallel view of the plane here. Um, so let's uh, let's discard those, uh, that one, and let's uh, let's say we want to do a sketch that's in the middle of these two faces, right? Like between this face and this face. Um, and there's no, obviously there's no plane there, right? The, the front plane's over here, the top plane's down there, right plane's all the way over there. There's no plane in here, and there's no face to click on, right? If we click on this face, it's going to be over here, it's not going to be in the middle of the two faces, right? So what we can do is we can make this reference plane, right? This is going to be the features tab, we come from here, and then we have this drop-down menu, we're going to choose the plane. And for this, we're going to choose one of these faces, and we choose the other face, right? And this will automatically select this um, thing over here, which is called the mid-plane, right? And now we have a plane that's exactly, you know, halfway between this face and this face. So, um, and now, of course, we can choose the sketch, and we can click on that, and now we go here, you know, we're parallel to this plane again. Uh, but we're drawing stuff on this. Alright, you can see that circle is on that plane. All right, for this next example, let's say I have this somewhat uh, intricate uh, sketch right here, and everything's defined, and I'm going to uh, go to extrude it, but it's, it's a little complicated, right? I have all these separate things, and all I really want to extrude is this like one area here, right? This like inside this rectangle, but inside this one and outside the circle. Um, and there's all these like extra things here that I don't really want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to this Trim Entities button. Right, so I'm going to click the Trim Entities. Um, and now I have this, this Trim tab right here. And what I can do is I can just, you know, click and drag my mouse. You see I'm drawing a little line over a line. And it'll get rid of that line. So there it gets rid of that circle. And anywhere the lines intersect, it's, it's not going to cut anything on the other side of the line. So, right, this tiny thing intersects the circle tangentially here. Right, so if I do this, it's just going to leave this up here. This. And you can see as I'm getting rid of stuff, it's getting rid of, like, relations and dimensions that I've created. Right. So, since there's no longer... There's no longer this point over here that's in relation to this point that I've done here. Um, when I, you know, trim this away... There's no more relations. There's no more dimensions. So let's just get the rest of that. And now I have this this strange shape, right, that I could not have gotten just by itself without trimming anything. Um, and then we can, you know, come back and you know, dimension everything again. I can dimension stuff from the origin. Um, And everything is now black and, and fully defined. Um, and you know, similar similar things. Let's uh, about this this area up here, right? So we, in the last video we talked about this this area, this little rectangle. But this this we're going to talk about uh, these these guys up here. So um, going back to our previous part here, um, we can create a sketch on here and we can convert entities uh, and converting entities is just going to let you select a face. It's going to be a flat face. 
and um, it's just going to make the um, sketch of the outside of that face, right? So maybe I want to do it um, on this one, which is a little more complicated than just a rectangle, right? So I'm sketch on this face, convert entities from here, click the green check mark, and now I have a fully defined sketch on here. Um, but let's say I want this sketch, but a little bit like bigger, maybe like two millimeters bigger. So what I can do is I can select all of these, or yeah. So if it's a closed loop, I can select just one, uh, just one line. But um, I'm just gonna show you that I, I can select all these lines um, at once, just in case you have something like this and choose two, and now I'll have the same shape, just two millimeters bigger in every direction. Click the check mark, right? It'll give me this dimension here. Um, right, and that's the offset entities up here. I had to mention that at the beginning. Um, so let's go back to our complicated thing. Uh, and let's say I have this extra line, it's gonna be up here. Um, for fun, I'm just going to make this a construction line, right? So now it's dash, like in the last video. We're going to say it's a good 20 millimeters away and 15 long. Um, and maybe we'll say that this and this is 15 away also. Um, right, so what I can do now is I can click on this mirror entities and I can choose all of these guys over here. Right, and see, just selecting one doesn't select the entire thing, so just be ready to select all of them. Um, and I can mirror it out a different line that, I've had, that I have in the sketch. And then choose the line I just made. And now you can see this yellow over here. It's going to be the mirror what I have it here. Now I have two of those pieces. Um, you can do a similar thing with the linear sketch pattern. Um, this one, uh, let's select our entities to pattern. And we can choose, you know, which direction it's going to go. Like, so again, there's a lot to this one here. Um, make it be more of um we can we can say um if you want the y direction too now you have like a grid um but yeah experiment with that if you want uh and i encourage it because it's quite a uh, useful tool um but we can also come down here and do the ske circular sketch pattern um what we want to do so this first thing is going to be the point around which you're rotating. Let's choose like that one. And this, and these are going to be the entities the pattern, right? The ones that you're going to copy around the circle. So if we do that, we can see we have four of them around this particular point. And we can increase or decrease that as we see fit. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check that out. Uh, the move entities is going to be a little less um, important. But let's say you have this box here. It has, you know, zero things to find about it, we can drag and select it all, click the move entities and like, I don't know, um, start point is here and the end point is there. And now this is coincident to here. Uh, but you still have to like smart dimension everything. So it's not entirely helpful. And if you already know that you want something to be here, a rectangle coming from this point, it's not really important making a rectangle up here and like moving it to down here. Right, so uh, I'm gonna t I'm gonna show you guys one more thing, but I'm gonna use a new sketch to do it. So I'll be right back. All right, so now we're gonna talk about relations, which are really really helpful because you're not gonna have to use the smart dimension to do literally all the you know positioning of everything. So let's take a look at this this uh, sketch I made here, and let's say I want to make a line that comes off of this intersection between these two things. 
You see, I, I don't have a point to do. I, I can choose this midpoint here between this point and this point, but that's not really helpful because I want it here. So what I'm going to have to do is I have to choose this point here. I still can't put a thing here, but like, I can put it on that line. And that's that kind of close. I can like drag it to like almost on top, but like if we zoom in, you know, that's on the top. And we can do this like forever where it's like, oh, it's still not on top. So on top. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a relation. Now you can see this little green thing next to the point, and that's already a relation. If you come over here, you can say existing relations is coincident. And what that means is it's it's on this line. Um, so what I can do is I can select the point and then control click the circle, and now I have these add relations things here, and this is really helpful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose coincident. So now it's at this exact point between this line because it's coincident on this line and the circle because it's coincident on the circle. And we can zoom in and that's actually kind of funny. Um, so you have to take my word for it, but these two are, uh, this point is there. Um, but SolidWorks can't uh, load it so close to the, um, the intersection because it's just not built for that. But anyway, now I can come over here I can click on this point that I've created, and I can you know, do that. Um, maybe that's what I want to do the whole time. Uh, right, so there's a, a lot more uh, other relations that you can work with. Let's say I want this line to be tangent with this circle. All I got to do is select both of them and click the tangent. And now these two are tangent. And I can move this, move this around the like tangent. Um, so let's say also, I want these two to be parallel. Boom, parallel. Right? All I have to do is click the, the button. And now if I turn this one around, we have this one turning also. Um, so let's say this one, and this is tangent also. And what we can do is we can say this line, and this line, you see I've, I've dimensioned this line to be 20 millimeters long. But I haven't dimensioned this line, so I can make this one shorter. Uh, but let's say I want this one and this one to be the same size. Now I can click this equal here. And these will be both 20. Um, right. So let's see. Maybe this and this are perpendicular. And now I can't move these around. Or, well, I can't move it around because this is not fully defined. But let's say, uh, let's do another tricky thing where I can do uh, this, this point here. On that, make these coincident, and now I have a point here. I want this and this, right? You can choose two points, and say those are coincident. Um, so, again, the list of relations is very, very long. You can do a lot of things with relations, um, and I, I, I think that after you watch this video, you definitely should go take a look at your SolidWorks. And just experiment with these these sketches and try to make you know, a cool sketch using only relations, for example. Um, maybe you do like something like I did. You make a basic shape and then just start adding things to it. This kind of looks like some abstract art thing, right? Um, but apart from that, that's all I have for you guys today. So I hope you learned something and have a great day.